Hi, this is Kyle Eastwood, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi, everyone. John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Coming to you today from the 2017 Detroit Jazz Festival with our special guest, bassist extraordinaire, Kyle Eastwood. Hello, Kyle. How you doing? I'm doing great. I have known about you for some time, and I've enjoyed your music through YouTube and electronically and however else I can. I was very privileged to have seen you perform in person today. You've got a great band, and, you. and you're a great composer, and it's nice to meet you in person. Thank you very much. Now it's great to be here. It's beautiful. It's my first time actually here at this festival. I've played in Detroit before, but it's my first time here at the, this jazz festival. But you know, it, it, in Detroit, we're right on the riverfront here, and those buildings over there, you know, that's Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so Detroit, did you know, did you realize it's the only place in the whole country where you have to travel south to get to Canada? Oh, that's right. Yeah, across the river. Yeah, I does, I, uh, it does make sense. Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> well, we're on this side. I want to talk to you about your, your musical upbringing, how you became a bass player. You have a very famous dad, Clint Eastwood, but this is not about him. This is about you. You are very much your own man. And I want to ask about how you first were exposed to music and your musical upbringing. How did you become a bass player? I know your dad is a big jazz fan. He is, yeah. Both my parents are big jazz fans, so I, I grew up with a lot of music around the house. And um, um, I started playing. He, my, my father plays piano, and my mother plays a bit as well. And she plays ukulele and a few things. And my mother, my grandmother on my mother's side was a was a voice teacher at Northwestern University uh, a long, long time ago. So um, yeah, there was always a lot of music in the in the family. So um, my father plays piano, and he's taught me a little bit when I was really young. And then I started taking lessons. You know, when I was about seven or so. But the kind of music you were first exposed to was, you know, Miles and Coltrane and that whole genre. Yeah, quite a bit of that and a lot of big band stuff. You know, a lot of my parents were into you know, like Stan Kenton and Duke Ellington and uh, and uh, you know Count Basie and stuff like that. So that was a lot of that around the house. But um, yeah, definitely some Miles and um, Dave Brubeck and Stan Getz. And Did you get taken to a lot of concerts when you were a boy? I did. Well, I grew up. Um, I grew up in the Monterey Peninsula, so uh, wow. in California. So I grew up just about ten minutes drive from where the Monterey Jazz Festival is. So um, yeah, so the very first concert I remember ever going to was it was at Monterey in 1976 or 77, I think. Who did you see? Count Basie. Oh wow! When he was still alive and playing with the band. So it was um, yeah, it was Count Basie big band with I think Joe Williams was singing with them and stuff. And it was, so yeah, it was quite impressive. Was that impressive for uh, you know a, a child, a young boy who was probably into whatever your friends were into and whatever was on the radio, or did you truly I, dig it? I remember being really intrigued by you know even when my father watching my father and listening to my father play piano, you know, it's sort of being just the idea of being able to play an instrument, you know, well sort of intrigued me. So, and then seeing those guys play, you know, at Monterey, that kind of I think that. Hearing jazz live at a young age was especially even more so than just hearing the records around the house. Really, kind of got me interested in wanting to to learn to play an instrument. I'm guessing Walter Page was probably long gone by then, right? Probably, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so you didn't get <laughs> yeah. to see him. All right, we'll have to look that up. Well, how did you gravitate to the bass? I picked it up. Uh, I mean, I was into. I played piano for a while, and I learned a little guitar for a, a film that I was I did with my father when I was about 12 and so uh, learned a few you know a little a few chords and some stuff on what, what film was that I got to ask <laughs> that was uh, a movie called Honky Tonk Man okay um, about a country singer you know in the 30 in the yeah in the 30s so um, anyway so I, yeah, I learned a little guitar and then yeah, I picked up the bass um, shortly after that when I was you know in my early teens I guess and uh, yeah, I mean, I was always, in, I kind of was really interested in drums, you know, drums and, and bass, I think. So I don't know, I picked up the bass and electric bass at first, and it just kind of came easily to me, you know, or it just seemed, came naturally. So I, I sort of stuck with that, and then I started getting into, you know, listening to a lot of jazz bass play, like, you know, Paul Chambers and Ray Brown and stuff like that. So 
And then I sort of picked up the upright when I was about 18 or so. So you were already listening to Paul and Ray before you picked up the upright? Is that maybe why you picked well, up I the was upright? Probably listening to them without knowing who they were when I was a little kid through my parents, you know. But um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I was I was listening to them, and uh, yeah, like those were some of the early ones that I was kind of really influenced by. Yeah. Tell me some of the uh, composing work that you've done, because you mentioned one film, and I know you were involved with several uh, as a composer and as a as a session player too, right? Yeah, I've done. I mean, I I did a lot of. I mean, when I was grow. I, I lived in Los Angeles for a, a few years after you know after my brief stint in college, <laughs> and um, um, yeah, I did some studio music and played in some or- film orchestras and stuff like that. So that was my early exposure to film music and then uh, yeah i mean i I, you know being around my dad and and lenny niehaus and stuff like that and uh, that's kind of my early my early film music experience and um yeah then i started writing some pieces for my father when he needs something for a particular scene or something and sort of gradually worked my way up to just doing the entire score (laughs) How old were you when you started writing music for major full-scale motion pictures? Uh, the first, I mean, I started was just writing little bits and pieces when I was, I guess, in my, um, I don't know, early 20s, I guess, okay. or something. And then, or, you know, early, mid-20s. And then, yeah, by the time I was in my early 30s, I started doing, like, you know, good pieces of his scores or entire the entire films. And then I worked, I've done a, a score, I guess, maybe five or four or five of his films and worked on another in various respects on a few four or five others of his. so I, I assume you'd go to the studio while these I mean if you weren't playing you would still go to the studio and be there while they were recorded or no yeah 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 no well I mean you I mean I would do all do all the work on the computer first and then uh, and then then all the parts get written out and then yeah then you go in and and, and record all the music you know the orchestra at, at the end so yeah no I was always there yeah all the way through to, from the beginning to the end yeah. tell me about your career now you've got a whole big handful of albums out and I know you have a, a brand new one that's coming out real soon right yeah, in uh, October twentieth, it's called In Transit, and um, yeah, it's kind of it's my regular band, uh, my European band. Which actually, the, the piano player you saw today was is in my. He's he's from he's from London. It's all London-based musicians, so so they're all uh, the main musicians I'm playing with. And then the guys I was playing with today are guys that I've known from when I lived in New York from a few years back and played together over the years in various formats. It was very impressive. But you, you spend most of the year living in Paris, is that right? I do, yeah. I've been there sort of the better part of the last 10 years, I'd say. Yeah, so yeah. I've been, um, yeah, I, I'm there more than half the year, I'd say, just because, you know, playing and touring over there. And then, uh, yeah, and then I come back here to play and visit visit the folks. <laughs> what, what attracted you to Paris? Was it the music scene, the jazz scene? Yeah, I just, I'd been living in New York for about six years and I was going over to, to Europe and playing you know somewhat regularly so yeah it was just for a change and yeah I sort of fell in love with it over there and I put my daughter in school in Paris for, for she was there for a few years in school and um, yeah I just uh, it was a lot of great opportunity to play there and like some great great jazz festivals there and uh, is it true because they, they used to say anyway that the Europeans seem to have a deeper appreciation for jazz than the Americans is that true I think that's fair to say to a certain degree yeah I mean there's I mean they certainly I mean if you look at someone's record collection it's at the average person's house you go to in, in in France you know you see quite a broad spectrum of music you know you'll see like pop music and then you'll see music from North Africa and like in the Middle East and then you'll see like you know something like a David Bowie record and then you'll see like a you know Duke Ellington record and then it's like you know it's so they have probably a little more eclectic taste I think sometimes in general but um, yeah I mean there's, there's definitely a lot of jazz appreciation there you know, I think some of the best festivals are, are there. how about Japan Do you ever go over there to play yeah I've been many times actually and uh, I usually go like once a year I'd say 
Yes, I know they love jazz, and if you, if you go to the baked potato in L.A., you see a lot of Japanese people that come over <laughs> spe specifically to go to the baked potato, it almost yeah, I seems. But, uh, yeah, I had the privilege of, uh, of uh, being at the Blue Note in Osaka and in Tokyo. The Tokyo both. one's great. Yeah, Osaka one's nice, too. Yeah, but the, the Tokyo Blue Note's probably one of the nicest jazz clubs to play at, I have to say. They, you get, they, they treat you treat you really well yeah, there. You yeah. get spoiled playing there. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your equipment. You were playing a, uh, a very interestingly shaped upright bass. It's, yeah, it's David Gage's uh, Checkies, so it's, yeah, it's just in my airplane, my airplane bass. <laughs> I'm sure part of the reason you play it is because it sounds good. It does, actually, yeah. I mean, it sounds a lot better than, like, one of the, like an electric upright, you know. And, and that's, like, you can, rec I mean, it has a real sound, you know. You can, I've recorded it with a, you know, with a microphone, and uh, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's a nice instrument. You yeah, know? I've it's, seen Dave Holland with a very similar-looking yeah, bass. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of pickup do you put on there? David Gage's. Yeah, the realist? The realist one, yeah. 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 And how about your electrics? The electrics are something designed by Bunny Brunell, but they're sort of prototypes. They're from a long time, about almost like 30 years or so ago. So they're, I keep trying other stuff and um, nothing, you know, I've been playing them so long, I keep... I keep Stick with what works. I know Bunny has always been very into design of basses and he's always very proud of his latest whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, they're old prototypes that were made at the Gibson Custom Shop um, for, for me and they're very similar to his original prototypes, but uh, I know he's gone through a few different makers since yeah. then. But, yeah. What about strings? Labella, Labella on on both on the uh, on the electric and the upright. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've been playing Labella for quite a while, right? I did. Yeah, I I, I got turned on to them through Bunny because Bunny's Bunny plays them. So right. uh, yeah, and I met all the all the gang over there. Eric and Lorenza. Yeah. Yeah, and well, originally and Richard, Richard, so, right, the father, and yeah. Archigian and all those kind of yeah, yeah. stuff. So, but um, good people. Yeah. What about the future, Kyle? You must be excited about the new record. But what else is on the horizon? Is there anything that uh, you've been wanting to get to but just haven't gotten around to yet? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I don't. Um, no, I've just. Um, I just did a tour with. Uh, just as, as in a trio with Jean-Luc Ponty and um, really? and Borelli Legrand, just just around Europe for all of July and part of August. So that sort of took up most of my summer, and um, that was really a great experience, a lot wow. of fun. Just uh, just acoustic bass, acoustic violin, and acoustic guitar. So I love both of those guys. I saw Jean-Luc Ponty like 1978 with yeah. Ralph Armstrong. Yeah. <laughs> in the gym at Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan. <laughs> and I saw him again more recently with, uh, with Chick Corea and yeah, Stanley saw. Clark and wasn't Frank Gambale, I forget, yeah. or was it Frank? I forgot who yeah, the... Gambale and was. Lenny, well, anyway, yeah. And then Borelli Legrand, I have an album by him that I like very much. First yeah. song is called Timothy, I think, or Timothy. I know this way, Timothy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah they're both great players, so that was... That was what I did for quite a bit of the summer, and then um, I'm doing some gigs in the States here for the next, over, off and on for the next few weeks, and then I go back to Europe in October, November to start the tour over there for the new record, and then, uh, but yeah, I'll be, um, I'll be out and about. The new record, a pretty even balance of electric and upright, or fretless and not? Predominantly upright. There's two, two or three electric tunes on it, and then... Fretless, the fretted, or... Uh, yeah, fret both actually. Oh, actually okay. yeah. That's what I was getting. Yeah. <laughs> one, yeah. I think one or one of each or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Kyle. What would you be if you weren't a bass player? And something outside of music. <laughs> I mean, probably I would have tried to go into the film business. You know, I went. I did. I had a very brief stint at, at um, USC as a film major for like a year or so, and. Um, but I mean, yes, yeah, cinema and, and and music are the two things I've always I've grown up with and loved the most always. So um, so yeah, I probably would have liked to try to maybe be a director. I guess okay. that would be that would be something that that would be fun to do. But uh, I don't know. I was the music draw was too strong for me. So sure. you know, I I I end up when I was about eighteen or nineteen, sort of veering in, off into music full time and never really looked back. <laughs> and uh, and your parents were supportive of that. Yeah, well, they're both music lovers, you know. I mean, they're both big jazz fans, and they both, you know, are music lovers, and so um, yeah, they were they were supportive of me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that's always nice when that happens. Yeah. Uh, well, Kyle, it is great catching up with you. It's so yeah, great to great much. to meet you in person after yeah, following your your career and everything else. We wish you much luck and continued success. Success. Good luck with the new record and thank keep you. us posted on anything new and we will share it with these folks here. I will do. Yeah, thank you very much. All it's right. a pleasure. On location at the 2017 Detroit Jazz Festival with Kyle Eastwood, I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Mm -hmm.